When it comes to Joe, he and the trash are old friends. But there have also been a bunch of dishes that have left him speechless. Wow. Just like this time, when one contestant brought a whole new twist to the table. Now, get this. If you're going to take part in a cooking competition, you should know that it takes more than just skill to impress the judges. It takes heart, creativity, and a magic touch to make an impression. And guess what? This contestant right here had it all. Yes, I'm talking about Sue, a food blogger from Houston, who was featured in Season 11. But here's the thing, Sue wasn't just a regular blogger. She was a passionate food lover with roots in Burma, a place where every meal tells a story of resilience and gratitude. Just like home, with a lot more cheering people. So when it was time to present her signature dish, she decided to present a tantalizing Burmese noodle soup with shrimp and coconut curry as a tribute to her homeland. When Chef Sanchez and Joe walked in to check over her station, Joe was already all in for Sue's dish. That looks amazing. Well, I think we've already got ourselves our winner. And no, it didn't stop and start at the dish. It was the passion for her country that won our hearts. I come from a third world country. We have to eat so that we can survive. So we are already grateful to have a bowl of rice every day where I came from. Sue was brimming with determination to bring some of the most exotic dishes to Master Chef, and the judges were soon to see that. Shall we taste? As the judges dug into Sue's creation, the room filled with anticipation. I have a thing yes, that sir. I say yes, not to too many people, which is food of love. And well, there was more appreciation yet to come her way. And this here, Sue, yes, chef. is food of love. Well done. Thank you, thank you very much, chef. I'm very humbled. That must have been one of the biggest compliments anyone who calls himself a chef can receive. Even Sanchez couldn't help but praise her creation. That is truly something special. It means a lot to me, chef. Now, when it came to Joe, one thing was clear. He was already sold. I made that much clear earlier. But when he actually started talking, there was no room for doubt. A profound immersion into Burmese cuisine. Thank you very much, Joe. This dish undoubtedly stood out as a true masterpiece, transcending cultural boundaries with its exceptional taste and execution. As for Chef Ramsay, well, he was just plain wholesome. It's the best dish I've tasted all night. As the praise poured in, Sue found herself standing there totally blown away, her eyes sparkling with joy and gratitude. Suddenly, it hit her. Her cooking wasn't just about making good food. Well, it was about touching people's hearts and taste buds alike. And man, did you leave an impression. So when it came to handing out that apron, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that it belonged to Sue. Congratulations. Come over, please, young lady. Thank you very much. But hold on, turns out Joe and the judges were itching for her to leave, but maybe not for the reason you'd instinctively expect. And go away so we can finish eating the rest yes, of the yes. <laughs> If someone were to dismiss me for such a trivial reason, I'd be absolutely thrilled. It was quite evident that Joe was thoroughly enjoying himself, which came as a complete shock considering his usual, well, everything. Attitude, taste, you name it. Sue's mastery of one exceptional dish was enough to solidify her standing in the competition. But hey, she wasn't the only one that managed to impress the unimpressible Joe. Because this contestant from season 13 left him speechless. I'm Purvi from East Windsor, New Jersey. My specialty is American and Indian fusion cooking. I'm talking about Purvi, a culinary enthusiast known for infusing Indian flavors into her dishes. In episode 1, she was all set to bring her A-game in hopes of snatching an apron. Indian community in New Jersey is really, really big. I feel so proud to represent them. I'm making bunt cake with Indian flavors. The pressure on her shoulders was something else, man. I mean, not only did she have to impress the judges to make it onto Master Chef, but she also had the weight of everyone from India counting on her success. Talk about a heavy load. And then her dessert, the vanilla bunt cakes with all the amazing Indian spices mixed in. Could it be the golden ticket that could lead her to success in the competition? I've been doing this for the last 21 years. I can do this in my sleep. <laughs> All right, so when it came to the judges' verdict, they were totally hooked in from the start, seriously intrigued by what she had whipped up. Wow. Oh, I love it. It reminds me of like an Indian festival wedding when there's just color yeah, thank and you there's so vibrance much. everywhere. It looks stunning. I'm dying to get in there. When a dish looks as beautiful and vibrant as hers, I'd expect nothing less. I mean, if it were me, I'd never dig in. Because just look at that. I'd honestly feel so bad ruining such a work of art. And the judges thought so too. Oh, look how moist it is. 
Joe, who usually takes his sweet time to give a verdict, was the first one to take a crack at describing what was in front of him. Yeah, really good. I just got back from India. <laughs> the most incredible flavors gives me a new appreciation of tasting your dish. You know what? That dish was seriously off the charts, like mind-blowingly good. He was so absolutely floored by how delicious it was that he didn't even bother waiting for the rest of the gang to chime in with their thoughts before throwing his vote into the ring. It was like he couldn't contain his excitement and just had to let everyone know how awesome it was right then and there. It's a yes for me. I really liked it. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Now, I don't know how often you've seen him make a vote like that, but for me, it's a rare sight for sure. As for the other judges, they obviously shared the same excitement that Joe did. This bite, it is so moist and fluffy. Thank like you it so has much. levity and balance. Thank yes. you, thank you so Definite much. Definite yes. Pervy couldn't contain her joy when she saw how the judges thoroughly enjoyed her dish. She was overwhelmed by the impact her creation had made. Watching the judges savoring every bite felt like a victorious moment, one that she would remember for a long, long time. And let's be real, this vote was probably the easiest decision ever made in the history of MasterChef. Like, no contest, right? But Sanchez, you know, he totally tried to spice things up right in the middle of everything. Like, seriously, talk about drama. I'm not gonna say yes just yet, okay? So I have to think about this for a little bit. However, let's be real here, it was pretty obvious he was just trying to grab some attention yet again. I mean, come on, a little while later, he caved in and gave up. Classic move, am I right? Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. For me, it's an absolute yes. Yeah, he couldn't wait any longer. As for Chef Ramsay, well, he decided to dive right in at the first given opportunity. It's a resounding yes. Thank you so much. That's four yeses. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank, Congratulations. You, thank you. In the end, with a resounding yes from each judge, Pervy's dish became the highlight of the night. But it was Joe's unexpected response that steals the show. Now, you have to agree, this dish set a standard, especially in Joe's eyes. And this next contestant came in close competition. In the high-stakes kitchen of Master Chef, one single misstep can lead to a disaster. But sometimes, amidst all the pressure, contestants manage to leave even the most seasoned judges stunned. Just like this time when Kenny, a 46-year-old Boston native, blew the judges' minds. I've always wanted to give people the great food that I give my family. This is my opportunity to do that. You see, Kenny may be from Boston, but his roots? Now, that was something both him and Joe had in common. I had great grandparents that came from Naples and Sicily, so I had influences from all the regions of Italy. But let's see if that actually works in his favor, cause, you know, it may only serve to give Joe an excuse to judge him even harder. So what happened is, when Sanchez and Joe walked in to check in on him, Joe was quick to notice this odd connection. What's your name? My name's Kenny Palazzolo. No doubt that you're from Boston. I am definitely <laughs> from Little Italy in the north end of Boston. I mean, given the circumstances, his reaction was pretty normal. The connection to someone from the same country as you in a foreign land is just something else. As for the dish, it wouldn't take a genius to guess what Kenny was preparing. A New York strip, brujol, latini, salt, and buca, stuffed with prosciutto and Can cheese. We start with well, isn't it just so fitting that Kenny went with an Italian classic like New York strip bracciole? I mean, he was all for embracing his roots, paying homage to his family's culinary legacy. But get this, it wasn't just about the dish itself. Nah, it was something totally different that really showcased his heritage in a whole new light. What, what do you say? What kind of Italian do you speak? You speak not then Italian. <laughs> Man, let me tell you, I saw it from a mile away that Joe would jump on the accent bandwagon. And guess what? When the moment of truth arrived and everyone was presenting their dishes, Kenny not only managed to win Joe over with his cooking skills, but also captured his heart in the process. It was like a double win for Kenny, leaving Joe absolutely smitten. I brought you a New York strip, brujolatini, salt and buca, on a bed of vegetable risotto. No doubt, the judges were blown away by just the plating of his dish. Look so, at that presentation. Visually, wow. you've got it going on there, my man. I did my best. It looked visually stunning, but would it deliver on flavor? Now, this is where Joe really started to worry. He couldn't help but wonder if Kenny's dish would really live up to the hype. The Brazala not stewed in tomato sauce, it's basically a grilled stuffed steak. So this is an interpretation of what would be classic Italian. The dish was an interpretation of classic Italian cuisine, and I don't have to tell you how important this was for Joe. As the judges took their first bite, anticipation hung in the air. And then it was time for the verdict. That's wonderful. You've wow. defied the odds because I'm amazed you got that texture from a New York strip. The judges were all here for the dish. 
And Kenny, well, let's just say his grin could light up the whole kitchen. But the judges realized that there was a tiny, tiny flaw. It does need homework on that risotto. I needed another two minutes. The risotto may have needed a little bit more time, but it seems like Joe didn't care, because if you replay the clip, you'll see how he was itching to go in for another bite. The dish was a hit in his books. Anyway, despite the minor flaw, the judges saw the potential Kenny had. I can taste the passion. Uh, that's evident. Um, for me, it's an absolute yes. Kenny was able to create a dish that was near perfect within that given time frame, and this was proof of his impeccable skills. It's really impressive. 100% yes for an apron for you. As for Joe, he was willing to turn a blind eye to the minor flaw. Because, well, he was already impressed beyond measure. And maybe just a little biased. Maybe. It's far from traditional, but it's well executed. You see, the dish may not have been as traditional as he'd expected it to be. But he couldn't help but shower it with compliments. And I think it's a really good interpretation of your personality into a tradition of Italian food. Honestly, it was a pretty easy win for Kenny. Benvenuto alla cucina di Masterchef. Grazie, you amico mio. Prego. Buona you fortuna. Go. Grazie. And believe me, he was more than grateful for having received the apron, specifically because it was handed down by Joe. Joe Bastianich, to hear him say that he believed in me and handed me that apron, such a surreal moment in my life, I'll never forget it. Well, this one dish propelled Kenny to being one of the top contestants on the show. But that's a story for another time, so let's move on. If you ask me, I think season 12 of MasterChef was in a whole different league with contestants from the previous seasons coming together to fight for the win once again. And in this battle, if there's one guy who stole the spotlight with minimum effort, it definitely has to be Michael. It takes hours or days to make the broth. All right, so here's the deal for this episode's challenge. The contestants had teamed up with Grubhub to upgrade some of the most popular delivery items in the country. The one who nailed the challenge gets a sweet immunity pin and a spot in the top 10 with Shanika and Bowen. So each contestant got to pick a random takeout bag with a dish they had to work with. And what did Michael get? Ramen. Oh. Ramen? Oh yeah, the guy definitely had his work cut out for him. But that's not all. To make the task a bit more challenging, the judges decide to drop another bomb. You will have 45 minutes to cook us an upscale gourmet version of your chosen takeout dish. With the stakes so high, you can imagine the kind of pressure each contestant must have been going through. But was Michael up for the challenge? Well, you be the judge. Here's a look at what he decided to make. It is very hard to make ramen. It takes hours or days to make the broth. Trying to figure out how I'm gonna elevate it and like put my twist on it. Sounds interesting enough, right? But Michael had a good reason for picking this dish. Turns out he had lived in Korea for a while and so their cuisine was far from foreign to him. But guess what? This little life experience would eventually play to his advantage. As Michael confidently placed his dish in front of the judges, anticipation filled the air but they were gonna have to taste it sooner or later, and that's exactly what they did. Joe took a cautious sip of the broth, and he was hit with an unexpected wave of heat. His reaction was priceless. A little bit spicy. Wow. Maybe Michael should have dropped a spice warning or something, because Joe definitely wasn't expecting that. It was clear that he wasn't exactly comfortable with all those Scovilles. And the camera ops were doing some serious work capturing his reaction right there. Joe struggled to find the right words to describe what he had just ingested. Whether because he genuinely couldn't think of something right away, or because the spice was preventing him from even putting a sentence together. But just as the tension reached its peak, the judges finally zeroed in on two dishes that stood out from the rest. Michael. So, was the bold flavor a risk worth taking? Let's find out now. Regardless of the initial shock that Joe had received, he was actually pretty impressed with the dish once his taste buds had recovered. Everything looks super elevated. Mm. As for the other judges, they chimed in with more appreciation. The presentation is clever. You're using the crispy little rice noodles as a textural component. Looking forward to trying it. And since one judge had already experienced the heat before anyone else dug in, Michael decided to warn them. Of course, I like my ramen spicy. Yeah, no kidding. But let's see if Chef Ramsay would be able to take the heat. Dish is delicious. Love the take on that Korean influence, especially with the heat. Hey, I'll give that a passing grade. As for Sanchez, he straight up said that the dish was award winning. And a little bit of spice was never gonna phase him. If that wasn't enough, Joe had more to share. I like the intensity of it. I don't know if you could eat a whole bowl of it, but all the components in the dish make sense. Very strong. Well, sometimes taking risks can lead to greatness, and things luckily worked out in Michael's favor this time. 
Well, these contestants managed to leave Joe shocked with their delectable dishes, but there was this one contestant who left Joe dumbfounded for all the wrong reasons. But here's the real question. Are we going to see another signature Joe dish thrashing? Go ahead and drop your guesses in the comments section down below. But for now, in Season 3, Episode 8, the tension was palpable as the contestants faced the day's dreaded elimination challenge. The challenge revolved around the judges' favorite desserts, and Felix sadly landed with the Herculean task of pleasing Joe. My favorite dessert, tiramisu. As the clock ticked down, the pressure mounted as Felix struggled to prepare a dish worthy of the judges' praise. When Joe decided to come check on her, he wasn't too happy about how things were going. Were you not going to put it in a form? How are you going to make it? On a plate, kind of more free form. Wow, that's risky. Things weren't off to a great start. Regardless of Joe's concern, Felix was feeling confident. Anyone can go home today, and you're in a competitive group. I'm not going home today. Well, we'll see about that. Anyway, with time running out, Felix was the first person to present her tiramisu to the judges. But even before she laid the dish before them, Joe happened to notice her expression. Let's begin with tiramisu. Felix? That was brutal. I mean, he sure didn't have any high hopes when it came to this particular dish. He was beyond disappointed. You saw the standard, we put it up there, we asked you to execute it, and you come back with this. It's so disappointing. And if that wasn't enough, he then dropped another brutal comment. If it's bad, you will go home. Hell yeah. There's no place for people who don't meet the standards on Master Chef. That's the one rule the judges have set. Either you follow or go home. And believe me, things weren't exactly looking up for Felix. But when Joe took a bite of her dish, he couldn't help but ask her one simple question. Why'd you put nuts in here? I like mac nuts. Macadamia nuts and an Italian tiramisu? I mean, how could she not know that? But just as Graham decided to taste the dish, Felix was already tearing up. I'm sorry, I have to eat this. Well, it's not even eating it, it's, it's looking at it. Like, to see her come up with something like this was totally out of character. And his reaction was quite expected, he deemed the dish terrible. And when it came to Chef Ramsay, he didn't hold back either. Way too sweet, macadamia nuts, nothing. Looks as sad as you do, because it is a mess. Well, it just looks like it wasn't her day. The tiramisu, if you can even call it that, was just a sad little puddle of mush. And well, according to the famous chef, this was Felix's worst performance on the show. If Chef Ramsay dropping that dire warning was any indication, Felix found himself in the bottom three. Fortunately for him, Scott was the one who was sent home instead. Talk about dodging a bullet, whew. To Scott. And get back to your station. Good luck, mate. So, can you think of more times when Joe truly relished the dish? Or some times when it took him a few seconds to process what was put in front of him before, you know, throwing it in the dumpster? Make sure to drop them in the comments section down below. And if you like this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Plus, hey, don't forget to drop by my social media pages if you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. Now, wait, 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 if you thought this video was crazy, then guess what? I just dropped another mind-blowing video right here, so be sure to check it out.